evening guys it's another beautiful day i thought i'd do a little plot tour look at that look at that sun on there gorgeous we just had quite a lot of heavy rain uh, in the past couple of days here in west london so i thought i'd do a plot tour before the mosquitoes come out so i thought it might be a bit easier i mean i have used a drone here before but they've uh, tightened up the drone laws and um, because some silly people decided to fly them in places where they shouldn't be flying them so i'm not going to do that anymore so i thought i'd just uh, draw out uh, a map of my allotment on this whiteboard that i've got because i'm kind of a little bit geeky so just to help you guys um, picture the whole of the allotment uh, essentially and so you can give a bit of perspective as we walk around so where we are, are at now it's just this is the secret garden area so it's just a little tour around this is a newly built area that I've built or my granddad helped me build this area and this is a place where I'm going to start things like yoga and meditation because uh, I'm going to do it to help tackle a few health and mental uh, problems I've had and I've had in the past so I'll do another video about that some other time but what we do is start from here this is the secret garden so we walk out now just to give perspective this is south facing as well here are people's gardens at the back here and the road to the allotment the entrance is that way and that way okay so this is my full plot then I share half a plot with my neighbour who also has a full plot here uh, the reason why we have quite a lot is because this site is particularly neglected as you can see back here this is the area you see all them weeds just around there there's about six or seven pots deserted and that's the area that i call the wild wild west so um, that's why we've got quite a bit uh, to play with at the moment so yep so as you come out from the secret garden we've got a little storage over here there's nothing interesting here but this area is for cuttings which i've lined with logs and stuff which i hope to grow mushrooms this little project We've got our little mini composters here. We've got a little bed, a uh, little table to pot stuff up with. We've got a shed, which is a library. This is a little flower bed here. Obviously, we've got a greenhouse, and these are big beds here. It's not really to a uh, what's the word uh, to the correct size. We've got a polytunnel here. Then we've got this is what used to be a polytunnel before the storms we had a couple of years. We've got some big beds up here. These are perennial beds. Now, one of the things I want to do. It's because of the wind blowing the weeds in and things uh, it's stopping me grow certain crops like bay and kiwis and stuff like that because of the wind and the exposure so one of the projects is to basically plant up all the way around the edges of the allotment with various crops to help create a bit of a wind barrier or a bit of a wind uh, diffuser so the plan is in the winter to move all these perennials which are globe artichokes our currants and things like that they're all going to go in this sort of area here and we're going to back it up and maybe some of that blue uh, nettings help stop the weeds as well because that is a problem because i am losing because of that because there's so many weeds uh, seeds that are getting blown in so that's the plan for the winter i've already started to uh, plant it up with things like hazel and hawthorn obviously these things will be kept into check as well but the council doesn't you know, the council here, as long as they get their money, they don't care if plots are neglected, which is quite sad. So I've got to find a way to deal with this easy, the easiest way to try and deal with this. Otherwise I'm going to end up losing the battle, it's quite disheartening. And then we have up here, towards the bottom, just some small raised beds. This area sort of needs quite a bit of weeding done to it, so I'm going to come down and trim that up. We've got a big bed here as well, we've got one big bed along here and there as well. And this is the road, so the road goes there to the car park entrance, this goes to the pedestrian entrance, and this area will be the composting area which I hope to uh, set up as well. Um, I was going to do it last week, but there's a wasp nest around here that I accidentally dug into and I pegged it, so I'm not going anywhere near that at all. So there are a lot of projects on my allotment as well that I'm going to uh, move to be doing. And as we go into the second half, you'll be able to see them. So, as you come out from here, you do a left, and this is the kitchen area which is being set up at the moment. I've got a couple of barbecues, rocket stoves, prep benches, and here is going to be where the pizza oven is. Now, the pizza oven is going to be made out of an old oil drum which is going to be washed out, of course. And basically, I've just literally 
built like a raised bed around it, piled soil on top of it, that's going to keep it insulated and um, I'm going to grow things like herbs in there which I'm doing at the moment but there's bindweed that's been coming up and uh, something I've really got to remove. We've got some beds here, this is the bee area which is another project in the future. I decided not to do the bees this year only because I don't want to put the hive out and it get nicked. Um, so I sort of want to uh, create camouflage and grow things. I've got clematises and other things there. I'm going to grow around it and jasmine so they're going to help to uh, shield it off a little bit. And here we've got the pond which has been here for about three, four years. So originally what it was is this used to be my neighbour's plot, all of this, and he gave me half of his and I loved it and I was lucky to get my own plot over here so yeah, I was eager to try and maintain this area because this pond has uh, got some fond memories here and the pond is really good for growing aquatic crops it's good for wildlife like newts, frogs, things like that which are going to come out and keep down pests so that's why I wanted to keep this sort of area and again we've got a, a bed around here where we see our sunflowers and we've got some more perennials growing in here like wild cherries and hazelnut and things like that. This is the proposed chicken area. This is a project which will come after the bee area, but it's, um, that area is designated for it. I've got the chicken coop and all of that. And here are a couple of beds, and this is where our potatoes are. So that is the map of my allotment. So let's go out and let's have a tour. So behind here, this is one of the few places where it's actually sheltered in the allotment. And you'll see crops which will uh, flourish most best in here than uh, in other parts of the allotment. And this tea plant, I'm kind of disappointed that they got it from the supplier because it looked quite raggedy, but it's getting there. This has only been here a week. But I've got another plant, tea plant from another supplier just around there, that one there. That's looking beautiful, some lovely growth there. We've got some fuchsias here and the berries are edible for the fuchsias and at the back, I've got to watch my head because there's a piece of wood above it we've got a bay just there as well we've got some bamboo, the shoots you can use in cooking you've got to take precautions with them and we've got our hot plant which is here this was recently by the blueberries but it got moved because it didn't like the exposure and as you can see we've got some lovely growth from our hot plant here and the plan for this is for this to then sprawl up the post here so we can have some lovely hops as well for beer brewing and stuff like that. And we've got another climber here which we're going to use to climb around the secret garden and that is going to be our kiwi. And as you can see that's just crawling up, climbing up here as well so that's doing really well. These things, kiwi and bay, I grew on my allotment and they both or in the main part just behind here and they both failed because it's just too exposed the site as well so this area I've also put lots of mulch like pine needles and stuff like that to keep it acidic because that's what these guys like right let's go out I'll try and make this as quick as possible actually. so this is the cuttings area this is new as well I've done some tidying, I'm going to do some more tidying. We've got things like Buddleia, Forsythia, things like that, which I'm going to use as part of the hedging. Because it's going to take a while to get fixed. Buddleia is really good for wildlife, so I'm going to plant some of that as well. This area is for, I can't see because of the sun, this area is for cuttings as well and things that have been potted up. So we've got some bamboo there at the back, which I've potted up. I took uh, cuttings from them, they're doing really well. We've got some yak on here that needs to be planted out. We've got some Chinese artichokes that needs to be planted out in a big pot, some oregano and some rosemary and some more young plants just here. Right. Squeeze through squeeze through this area. Got a bamboo plant here as well. I took lots of divisions from my nan. We got our composters here. And we're going to do a detour onto the half plot, I think, first. So this is the bee area. Um, I've got to do some more support work on that. I haven't got around to doing it since the last time. But around it, I'm going to grow some climbers as well. I've got to, I want to get it all fixed and properly done uh, before I move the bees in as well. Before I even get bees as well.
And the good thing about the native hedges that will help them as well. We've got a little flower bed here. Look at that. Cosmia. Beautiful. There. And we've got clematis. This climber is going to be one of the things that are going to help to cover that bee area. Now these are the flowering currants which I think may have been a duff, duff batch because they don't seem to be doing anything as of yet. But we'll hang in there, maybe there is some life as well. I might have got them a bit too late as well. This biome weed, I mean look, just a couple of weeks that took. We had lovely herbs there as well, so I've got to go through them. And I've got to tackle these some of these perennial weeds that have come back again. I might use some gel. I need something just to go in there just to kill it off, but I've got to do it in a way that doesn't uh, harm wildlife or anything like that. So this is the kitchen area. It's a lot of work to be done on this. But probably more of it might be coming in the winter, but I've got a uh, week or so off or we've got some garden to do another bit so I'm going to tackle that in that time. This is a beautiful can of plant that's given to me. My lovely woman, look at that. Some battered recently by the weather. Stunning. And we've got a lavender down here which is flowering. Got some wild cherries. We've got some lilies here as well. There's day lilies as well I think. Look at that. I've got to take a picture of that. I'm going to focus. There we go. Look at that. It's crazy. Got some geraniums. This is the pond area just there. This area needs a good bit of tiding. Here, bind weed. Unfortunately, this is some plants. I hate that stuff. And we've got a passion flower here. I need to get some of those. Um, those cheap, uh, what they're called, arches up that you saw me walk past. But look at that, that's done really well here compared to the other ones. So, a lot of tidying and weeding to do, a lot and strumming. We've got our tree cabbage here, our tree cow, which we've cooked within. And we've got a little native hedging here. This is all new, so there's not really much impact. And it's from the smallest of the roots that I could buy, so it'll take a while to get there, but it will. Sunflower, got some nasturtiums flowering beautifully. Got a sweet corn here. We've got a pumpkin amongst this, and some yakon. It's doing really well. Let's see a better view of the pond. Turn around. We've got our main crop potatoes just here. It needs to be. We'll wait a few uh, weeks for them to die back again. I've got a bit too keen. I'll pick some, but they're a bit small, so I've got to wait a while yet, a couple of weeks, to uh, get in there again. Or maybe more. And here we've got some sweet corn. We've got some courgettes just here. You can see coming along nicely. We've done a little bit of the Three Sisters method here as well, where I've used the corn to grow runner beans up just here. It's crazy that the runner beans have actually done better once I've planted them in the soil, the seeds, as opposed to putting them in pots and planting them out. Look at these nasturtiums. We've got some wild cherry here, some more nasturtiums, some flower. This is amaranth here. And as you can see, these will get bigger, and what you do is you start to rub them and you collect the little seeds and you can use them in to thicken up soups or it's a bit like couscous and things like that it's a pseudo grain so what that means is it's treated like a grain but it isn't actually a grain and here we've got our tomatillos it's flowering here I'm sure if you guys can see that no, it's not focusing come on now you want to focus let's get a better angle Focus. 
we go. Come out with beautiful yellow flowers. Here we've got some tobacco, I don't smoke myself. It's really good for bees and things like that. It's been pounded by the slugs because of the uh, rain we've been having. These are more of the currants, which don't seem to be doing too well. And we've got a pumpkin over here, Japanese pumpkins. I was a bit uh, disappointed because I planted more of them to help basically cover more of the allotment because I knew I was doing a lot of uh, projects and not many of them survived, unfortunately. But so I'm a tomatillo here, a bit of flower. Great for salsas and things like that. Some more amaranth. There are some onions amongst this lot, but they just can't, can't compete with the weeds. I've still got a lot of construction work to do, but it's one of those things, really. And we've got some more runner beans going up our corn here. This is the classic Three Sisters method. We've got some more tobacco there. We've got a beast of a pumpkin. Yeah, it's decided not to play ball, it just wants to sprawl out and does what it wants. Yeah, this is the classic Three Sisters method. So we've got our pumpkin here, sprawling over. Then we've got, let's find a good, okay, we've got our sweet corn here. And then we've got our runner beans, which you can see are just coming across in the focus. Growing it up, the sweet corn just there. It's not focusing too well. Okay, that's a classic Three Sisters method in a small patch. Even starting to get some fruit forming as well. But yeah, I wanted to grow more of these to help plant in more areas. I knew things like onions wouldn't be able to handle. Well, they handle some neglect, but they just can't compete with the wind, uh, weed. Sorry. Passion flower. These are one of the things I'm going to use to climb around the will be chicken area eventually so seems to be doing well not as well as the other one but it's getting there and we've got a more of our sweet corn or it could be it's either sweet corn maize or popcorn um i can't remember which one it was and we've got here our yakon as well and we've got to see if we can get into a beautiful sunflower it's gorgeous, look at that. So this is the little chicken area that will eventually become a chicken area. So the coop and all that stuff is in here. But it's one of the projects which isn't doesn't have the most priority. The most priority essentially getting this allotment under control with the weeds and growing the uh, weed uh, protector or defender what it is the wild natural hedgerow hedgerow sorry so we've got some crab apples here and we've got some service berries we've got some more tomatillos down there uh, sunflowers we've got a pumpkin in the middle here more sunflowers tobacco and we've got some inca berries just around there we'll go around there now so we've got some more tomatoes here and they're just starting to ripen up as well growing amongst some more it could be the corn maize popcorn one of the three uh, i can't tell we were interested to find out a way to tell them once they're grown but i did label them but again uh, things got mixed up so we move along Maybe we can get a shot that's going in the polytunnel. So we've got our artichokes just here. We've got some yak on growing up. Some potatoes that have been harvested. Pumpkin just there. And a fig tree just around there. This is where the old polytunnel used to be. So we go into the polytunnel. As you can see again, we've got a run of beans. Just started to flower. There, climbing up our corn. Let's go in to the polytunnel. Oh, this place is like a jungle. All right, the polytunnel. Back, we've got some more tomatoes. Then we've got a 
cucumber melon is sprawling out, starting to form melons just here, little ones. They'll get bigger than that, but not too big though. Then we've got some more tomato plants here. Again, some tomatoes. And we've got a grapevine. See how many grapes are through there. It's put on so much growth. It's beat. This grapevine I got from a pound for a pound. It was a cutting in Poundland about three years ago. And look at it. Look at I'm not sure if you can see. Look at them grapes. So look at them just dangling from the uh, from the frame. And then we got our canners here. I shot to I forgot to show you a picture of the banana, but in the same sort of family. Canners are in the ginger family, banana family. And we've got a cinnamon vine. This is a first year cinnamon vine. So this is a true yam. And then we've got our, uh, what's our second year? I think this is our second year cinnamon vine here. And you can see all the difference in the leaves. This is the cinnamon vine leaves here. Come on, focus. The shape and it's growing up the grapevine as well. That's why I planted it here. So we've got some cinnamon vines. So we've got, okay, the second one, yeah, the second year one is at the back. That's going to put on the most growth. And then we've got one uh, that was started indoors. And then this one here was started outdoors in a polytol. It's a while yet to get those cinnamon uh, smelling flowers. <laughs> There you go, sorry about that. Ran out of space on my memory card. It's telling me I've got about five minutes, so I've got to hurry up. So this is a, a canna again we've got here. We've got Anna Akocha, which is growing up. This is also called uh, Lady Slippers, I believe. It's growing in Bolivia, and this is a really good climber. It will make nice uh, fruits, which look like slippers, as the common name suggests, which you can use uh, on pizzas and things like that, or stuff them as well. Look at that. You can see here better. The little cucumelons. Just gonna focus. No you're not. Alright, let's get out of the polytunnel. Whoa. I'll just at the back here. Alright, inky berries. We've got some sunflowers here. This is the ochre bed which hasn't been touched. I've got to read this as well. You can see the ochre amongst the stinging nettles and the dreaded bindweed. And this, I think, was a was chard or something that started to flower, but it's got really nice smelling flowers, or it did have. And we've got some more tomatoes here with maize, and that basically repeats down here as well. Just squeeze across. It's, it's growing like a beast. There's going to be a couple of big hard days worth of weeding and getting things tidy up. This is the wild hedgerow. Actually, while we're here, we might as well just cut this part. The wild hedgerow, which is consisting of elderberries, hazelnut, hawthorns, currants, and this is going to sweep all the way around there, all the way down there. Here we've got some country. This is the flower bed that's overgrown that needs to be contained. Some lovely roses here. Beautiful rose. Notice the pentagram shape there. So I'm just going to take you to the banana plant and the other cinnamon vine. We've got a hydrangea climbing up here to hide the shed. We've got some mint as well. And this is a banana plant. Putting some big growth. I pulled this out of the polytunnel. And climbing up this is a cinnamon vine, which you can see just coming up here. So this is a true yam. What's interesting about this one is I spotted one of the air tubules. So this is a young plant, so it's quite interesting to see. I've never seen this before. Maybe it's the seed and it's just pushed itself out. And this is a root down here, that's why it's there. But yeah, this is what it will form. And you can use these to grow more of them. And we've got a little cuttings bed just here as well. Right, let's speed this up a bit. There we 
got up here. Oh, we've got some raspberries here. This this whole area needs tidying. It's going to be a couple of days of hard blitzing to get this back into shape. We've got some day lilies here. I use the flowers in uh, stir fries. Very tasty, actually. We've got a little herb bed here. We've got some thyme just here. We've got some sage. We've got some newly planted. We've got some cre uh, creeping thyme here. We've got a lemon balm here. We've got a grape, which doesn't want to conform. Just coming out here. And we've got uh, some more crab apples here. They're going to form part of that the fence. This bed hasn't been used for anything, except we've got a artichoke that's uh, sprung up. And talking about artichokes, look at that. Hopefully, we'll get around the other side in time, and I'll show you the flower. This area needs to be tidied up. These are the perennial beds with the currants are and stuff. Massive tidying up needs to be done. Some more corn down here as well. The rose, some yakon. To be careful now because this is where the wasps nest is. Some bamboo. We've got some slow berries here which are in pots to keep them contained. I've got about a minute left, so I'm literally going to speed up. Not too much because the wasp nest is just there. I'm going to speed up here. So sorry guys if it's a quick goodbye. I oh of course. So cat. I was like, whoa, I didn't know that was growing. Oh, that gave me the fruits. Okay, we've got more of that uh, native hedging there. As you can see, no artichokes are just starting to flower. I think with that, guys, we're going to call it a day. So, guys, take care, and I shall see you.